Hi hey everybody, good evening to you from the Texas Gulf Coast, but not as close to the Texas Gulf Coast as I have been. I'm still at the same uh, extended stay hotel. I'm ready to get out of here. I just don't have a place to go. I may be, I think I told you all this before, but I may be the wealthiest homeless man in Texas. <laughs> and I'm not really homeless. I got a roof over my head, but it's not mine. So to me, I'm homeless. I have started searching again for houses in the United States. I just can't get my mind wrapped around moving overseas. <clears throat> and I'm finding some good deals, just not in Texas. Texas real estate is sky high, and I'm not going to pay it because it would take all the money I had, plus it's going to come crashing down because it's way above what the houses and properties are worth right now, and it's going to come crashing down. You can bet your bottom dollar it's going to come crashing down. And I don't want to get stuck with the house that uh, is worth half of what I paid for it. So I'm not going to buy any of those right now. But I'm finding some really good deals in other states. And pretty soon I'm going to take a trip and just go look at some of them. I found one yesterday in Kansas. I talked to the real estate agent several times. And I called her back. I said, I want to make an offer on it. And she said, okay. And uh, she came back and she said, the seller will not provide a seller's disclosure. That's not good. So I've got to go up there and inspect it closely myself. And I say closely because something's fishy since he won't provide a seller's disclosure. The pictures of the outside, it's got pictures of the, all, all the way around the outside and pictures of every room. Some rooms has several pictures from different angles and so forth. It looks perfect. It looks move in ready in every way you can imagine. But something's going on or the seller would provide a seller's disclosure. And so I'm going to go look at it sometime. And uh, Jason, my YouTube friend that I pray for all the time, lives in Pennsylvania. He has told me several times to look in Pennsylvania. I have been looking in Pennsylvania online, Jason. And I found some that I like a lot up there, but they're all mansions. I don't need a mansion. It's just me. <laughs> Don't y'all have any single man type houses up there? Goodness gracious. I, I don't think I found a single house up there for sale uh, under three or 4,000 square feet. I don't need a three or 4,000 square foot house. I probably couldn't afford to heat a three or 4,000 square foot house. I know down here in Texas, I couldn't afford to heat one that big. I don't know how much heating them cost up there, but it's very expensive down here. Matter of fact, my heating bills at that little 1,100 square foot house I had was higher than my air conditioning bills. And I ran the air conditioner just about all the time because it gets hot down here like nine or 10 months out of the year. And the heating bills, I just ran, I just had a couple of months but they were higher than my electricity bills. Go figure. So, I, you know, I did look up there, and I'll look some more, but so far, I have not found anything under three or 4,000 square feet. And the three or 4,000 square feet houses are beautiful, and they're very affordable. I just don't need a three or 4,000 square foot house. I'd, I'd get lost. I'd need a road map to get around, but it's mostly the utility bills that has me concerned about those big things. Uh, 
so I'll, I'll keep looking. I, I told you I think that I would, and I did, and I have been. I even looked at some more today. Y'all, you people up there must be rich. I don't know. Have houses like that? I I never saw town after town after town that has nothing but mansions. So y'all must be rich up yonder. Anyway, y'all, I am gonna read the fifth chapter of uh, Romans to you. This is the Apostle Paul writing, and. It's some good stuff, all of Romans. Anything that Paul wrote is good. And there's not going to be much uh, commentary here. I'm going to interject a little here and there, but not much. It's mostly just reading God's holy word from the King James Version, which is all I quote, except that one time I had misplaced my King James Bible, or I didn't misplace it. I had packed all my Bibles and the only one I could find was an English Standard Version, which I'm not real fond of, but I've got quite a few different uh, translations, and that was the only one I could find at that time. But I got my King James. This is one that I keep in my truck. It never got packed. It stayed in my truck, so I've got it inside the hotel room with me now. But let me get to hushing and start reading. Fifth chapter of Romans. Therefore... Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to talk about that just a little while here. <clears throat> I've already rambled on over six minutes. But y'all, if you know Jesus Christ, you've got peace. People... The last couple of years, oh, Callie's wanting to get up and mold out here. <laughs> uh, the people that last couple of years since this COVID scamdemic came out are losing their minds. They have no peace. They're scared to death. People. Jesus is still on the throne. Jesus is still our Lord. Jesus is still our great physician. He gives us a spirit of peace, not of fear. So stop acting like whatever. Calm down. Remember that he loves us and he watches over us 24-7. I started to say 365, but it's really 24-7 through all eternity. And I'm speaking of those who belong to him. You know, people that's going berserk over the scamdemic, I don't think knows Jesus. If they did, they would have peace. They would know that their great physician will take care of them. Yeah, people are dying. But not as many as you think they are. People dies more there's more people that dies in car crashes every day than is dying from this virus. It's just a virus. Strengthen your immune system. Get some exercise. Take your vitamins. It's ironic, or probably more like providential, that the vitamins I've been taking for years that my doctor told me I should take probably seven, eight, nine years ago are the exact vitamins that they're now telling you you need to take to defeat COVID if you get it and to build up your immune system so you don't get it if you haven't got it. It's just, you know, that had to be Providence seven, eight, nine years ago. And I still take them. She told me, oh, it was before COVID started, but not long before COVID, you know, maybe January of last year, she told me to increase my zinc from whatever uh, international units or milligrams or however it's measured, I had been taken to a, a higher strength, and I did, just because she told me, I'm not afraid. I don't wear a mask anywhere. I have been around people that had COVID, and I never got it. 
I have a strong immune system. I, I beat uh, stage four cancer with God's help, with my faith in God. My great physician healed me. I didn't take not one treatment. They told me I would be dead in four or five months. My oncologist that the hospital assigned me after the diagnosis was confirmed sent me an email and I still got the email, told me to look for a good hospice to make my last few months as pain-free as possible and as comfortable as possible. I laughed at him. I said, you don't know the God I've got. And I'm not being arrogant. I'm just telling you, you need to have your faith in God if you're a true Christian. If you don't trust God, then you're not a true Christian. Trust him with your life. He gave his life for you. You can trust him with your life. He is the great physician. I, I gave you all not too long ago, I gave you all several examples of people that were healed by faith in the Bible. People can still be healed by faith. That's not in the Bible. I'm one of them. Two times. Two times. I'm not afraid. Anyway, I, I rambled a whole lot more than I wanted to there. Let me start over. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through him. Bam. You got two sermons in one right there. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice and hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Bam again. Also knowing that tribulations worketh patience. And a lot of people I know needs patience. They need faith. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Remember, just before, after Jesus had arisen, had risen from the dead, just before he ascended into heaven, he said he was sending us the Comforter, speaking of the Holy Ghost. We got him. Get to know him. Ask him to translate, to interpret for you when you read God's holy word. It will come alive. It will have meaning to you when you read it. If you ask the Holy Spirit to interpret and translate as you read it. For when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. I could elaborate on that too, just refer back to what I've already said tonight. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. 
Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and that was Adam, and death by sin, that's talking about eternal death, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so, might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, do you know Jesus? And don't just flippantly say, yeah, I know Jesus. If you know Jesus, your life will show it. Your life will reflect it. So let me ask you again. Do you know Jesus? need to know him. Time is running out. Let me just get this back a little bit because I'm leaning over now. Time is running out. The tribulation is about to begin. The rapture is about to happen even sooner. Nobody knows when except God himself. But all the signs, all the prophecy that had to be fulfilled before the rapture has been fulfilled prophecy of things that will happen during the tribulation is in the process of being fulfilled now that means the rapture is imminent you do not want to be here when the rapture occurs without Christ as your Lord and Savior and he made it simple there is nothing we could do to save ourselves nothing if we had a million years to work toward our righteousness, we could never attain it. It is a gift of God through Jesus Christ. God sent his only beloved son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Jesus was the only perfect, unblemished, unspotted specimen to die whose death could er eradicate our sins. He gave his life up for us so that we could be saved. All you have to do is believe, have faith that Jesus is God, that Jesus is Lord, 
that his blood is powerful enough to save, our, save us from our sins and that he did die and he did shed his blood for that purpose only because he loved us and he wants us saved. You've got to believe and he gives you the faith to believe. The Bible says that all sinners will go to hell. When God looks at a Christian, a true Christian, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he sees no sin. It has been taken away totally. It doesn't matter how repugnant your sins may have been. The blood of Jesus is more powerful than they are, and it will take them away. You've got to have faith in that. You've got to believe. So friends, repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins and God will give you the strength and the power to do that if you're still living in your sins. Be saved, my friend. Please be saved. My heart is so burdened knowing that the uh, rapture is near. I am excited that the rapture is near. I am ready to be sapped out of here in a twinkling of an eye, but my heart is burdened, heavily burdened, because I know there are going to be many people I know left behind because they would rather live in the world, live for the minute, instead of living unto Christ. We have to believe in Jesus. We have to live for him. We cannot be saved by works, but once we are saved, we will do works for him because we love him and we want to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Are you doing that? Are you a true Christian? I pray that you are. I really pray that you are. If you're not, today is the day of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Repent of your sins. Ask God to forgive you and he will. Bam. I love you all. And I'll talk to you again whenever I talk to you. Don't know when that'll be. I got some good stuff, though. So it'll probably be soon. See ya.